Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. President Obama gave his State of the Union speech the other night, and uh, it was all about uh, we need to provide new industry and jobs and, and new types of energy for this country and all, free ourselves from foreign oil. I mean, it looked like, a, looked like maybe just for a brief second there, he was going to say, hey, we're going to legalize the hemp industry, because that would take care of everything that he addressed the other night, other than them needing to trim about half of the federal budget. But it would certainly be in the be a place to begin. In February of 1938, Popular Mechanics released a brand new article on a new machine that had just been invented. And the uh, captions that were touting the machine and all said, brand new machine is going to revolutionize the industry and put thousands of people to work and, and end six centuries of laborious labor that's been involved in the hemp industry. And the machine they were talking about was called the decorticator. And basically what it did, it separated the fibers on the hemp stalks from the cellulose herds on the inside of the stalk. And all this action had to been done by hand before, and it was labor intensive. And before they could even do that, they had to stack the stalks and stuff in the field in a process known as redding, which was an old term word for rotting. And basically what it was, the dew and all the moisture in the morning air and stuff would get on the stalks and it would loosen the fibers. And after a period of about two or three weeks of redding like this, the fibers would come loose and then they would save them a lot of work of trying to strip the fibers by hand, which is an intensive process. Uh, these stalks are, you know, when you're growing hemp, you plant seeds 40 feet, 40 seeds to the square foot and the stalks of the plants can reach up to 40 feet tall. And so if you can imagine having a stalk, you know, that's 40 feet long and trying to remove the fibers on it and keep them intact and all, this was quite laborious by hand. But in 1938, the uh, Popular Mechanics released this uh, article on the new decorticator machine that had been invented. But the publisher failed to realize that four months before that, in October of 1937, our government passed the Marijuana Tax Act, which pretty much killed the hemp industry. Now, we had an industry already that was a billion dollar industry in, in the 1930s. In 1935 alone, we, in this country, we used 120 million pounds of hemp seed oil that was produced here just in the, in the mid, ni mid of the 1930s. And if, if we applied today's technology with all the computers, all the machinery and all the know-how and all the, all the different ideas that people could incorporate, because this, back then people did things pretty much by the seat of their pants and they, they invented machines that were just to the point, they did the job, but they, they always can be improved on. And with the age of computers and things like that, there's no telling what type of decorticator machine they could really build today that would, I mean, these old machines handled about three tons of, of stalks an hour. You know, in a, in a day they could do what, what you could grow in a 10 or 15 acre plot of land, just one machine. And uh, the beauty of this was that it, when on the hemp farms themselves, you could grow anywhere from about three to six tons of the stalks. And so when you bring the stalks in and feed them through this decorticator machine, what it does, it's an automatic deal. It puts it on a conveyor belt and just, just runs it through there as fast as it can. The, the herds drop out the bottom of the machine into a kind of a, a conveyor system that carts them off to be bagged up for industry. And the uh, fibers shoot out the other end and they're bundled and tied and, and they're ready to go. The herds themselves make up about 75% of the plant. So if you're growing around six tons of hemp stalk on a on a uh, acre of land you're looking at about probably around four to five tons of these hemp herds now these hemp herds are used for every type of thing that you can conceivably make today with oil you can make with the hemp herds they were making dynamite with it but they make paper with it they make uh, just all sorts of products i mean they even henry ford even made a car out of the hemp hemp materials and stuff and it was a composite of the fibers in these herds and and uh, manufactured together with a high strength resin but uh, there's just thousands of things you can do with these and so when our president spoke the other night of a new industry that this country needed this is a this is an old industry that we need to bring back we had just begun in the in 1938 when popular mechanics released that article this was the dawn of a new age for the hemp industry if they had been allowed to to see this machine go into full action and 
And we only saw a brief re-lightening re of it briefly when the uh, United States government went back into the hemp industry uh, during the war because the uh, Philippine supplies were cut off. We're, we're looking, folks, that we could totally replace our, the amount of oil that this country uses. We, imp, we bring in today in the, into this country, on average, around 20 million barrels of oil. We could grow this oil on hemp, extract it from the hemp plant on farms here in America, keep that money in our own economy, not sending it back to the Arabs. And we can replace all of the products that we, that we needed the oil for that we make. We can make all of those out of the hemp herds. And we can stop cutting trees that we, we, that we cut down just to make paper. I mean, it's insane. You can make many, many more different grades of paper with the hemp and also the hemp herds. And also it's done by a less polluting process. When you take pulp, say, that comes from a pine tree, and by the way, it takes 40,000 acres of pine trees to make the same amount of paper that 10,000 acres of hemp would make. And plus, you can grow that 10,000 acres every year. A 40-year crop of pine tree, I mean, 40, four times as much pine trees took 40 years to make. So in essence, really, you can do 40 times that times four. Uh, because you can grow a hemp crop there every year and produce that amount. But the process used to take the pulp to the, the herds from the pulp that's grown in pine and so is a very nasty process. They use a very strong alkali, it's caustic, and if you've got a drop of it on your skin, it'd burn a hole right through you. That's how strong it is. And it's what creates these horrible smells that you smell outside of these paper mills and stuff. And the effluent, the runoff, the, the byproduct of this industry and what they have to get rid of and all is very caustic. It's a, it's a very high pH material and it's very hard to handle. It's very hard to dispose of. It causes lots of environmental problems. And in any area where you have a huge spill of that, you can kiss the, the biota around there goodbye because it completely wipe it out. Now hemp herds on the other hand <clears throat> are a little bit more loose, loose and they can be actually broken apart and manufactured by using something as simply as sodium bicarbonate. This isn't caustic, it's not dangerous, it doesn't have the horrible smell and it's a whole lot cheaper and, the, and it's, it's a lot easier process plus it makes a finer grade paper and we get four times as much material out of the same amount of land. So it's win-win. Bring the cost of paper down. Put more people back to work. You could put people to work right now building these decorticator machines and getting ready for the hemp industry. And this, this idea of new work, new types of energy, new jobs, these will come about. But this country has to get over this idea that people get high on marijuana. And by keeping it illegal, we're, all we're doing is causing deaths and drug violence and cartel violence and locking up thousands upon thousands of people. That's an even bigger burden to the society and all. Get, get this idea that people get high on marijuana out of your head. It has statistically proven itself to be safe. We have never had one person go to the emergency room for cannabis overdose, ever. And historically, since the dawn of time, nobody has ever died from using this substance. It is safe. It's safer than aspirin. The Harvard Medical School themselves, the director of the Harvard Medical School, said that marijuana is the safest therapeutic substance on the planet. It's an herb. We have natural receptor sites in our brains that are designed to handle this material. That's why we can't overdose. That is why it's safe. And we've got to get this idea of getting high on marijuana and our kids getting hold of marijuana out of our heads. We're holding up an industry that literally could pull us from the bowels of doom. This country's in trouble and we have to do radical things. But this is an industry that we can start today and we don't have to pump a lot of money into it. And this spring we could plant the first hemp crop here in this country and by the end of the summer already be selling hemp products and burning fuel that was produced here in America and keep the money here. If you really are sincere about turning the country around, if you're really sincere about making jobs for people and creating new industry and new types of energy, we already have it. We already have the process in place. Let's do this, folks. Let's get this going. Write your congressman, everyone, tell them, look, we have the industry. Let's just get this war on drugs over with so we can get it started. Abolish the DEA. They're worthless. They do absolutely nothing but chase after people who want to use a safe herb. 
And if we can do this, we can create jobs and you'll see a brighter day for America. This is something that can happen and it can start today. And we don't have to have a vote. We don't. Have, this is something that can be done through several different branches in the government, very simply. We can excise ourselves from the Singles Narcotics Treaty that we signed in 1960, which by the way, the Amendment 28, Article 28 of that convention states that we need to have control of the leaves of the cannabis plant. That's all they talked about was the leaves of the cannabis plant. They said nothing about the flower, the flower tops that you smoke. They said nothing about the hemp industry and the, and the fibers and the cellulose fibers and stuff. Merely the leaves. So we have a loophole there to get out of it right then if we wanted to legally right there in the, on the spot. But we don't need to do that. This is an industry that will save America. And, and we can stop ruining lives of innocent people who have done nothing but chosen a safe herb over this alcohol and prescription drug recipe that's legal out there on the streets. And I thank you for spending time in the Cannabis Corner.